I always used to say no company would ever go out of business for having too much cash. I want to change that because there's an organization that has too much cash and is bankrupt and broken, and that's our education system, and it should go out of business. And I'd like to talk about why. And I think there's an opportunity here. I think there's a barrier here that are really near and dear to me, uh, and I want to talk about those. The opportunity here is real-time scoring using technology and the internet, and the barrier is the government. When uh, I agreed to talk here, I thought, what would a former, formerly famous and important CEO have to do with education? Well, uh, I'm, I'm mostly known for my statement, you have no privacy, get over it. That is far too accurate now, and I was only talking about enterprises. I wasn't talking about our own government, but that's another conversation someday. <laughs> Uh, we did sort of invent a lot of great technology, and Al Gore invented the Internet, but at least we opened it up uh, <laughs> through open source. And we used to talk in the 80s about the network as the computer. If we had been smart, we would have just said cloud and saved a lot of words, but uh, that is where the world has moved. So our company decided to open up the internet and all of their technologies, but we also decided to open up education resources, and uh, I want to talk a little bit about that. Before I move forward, we focused on K through 12 education. How do we know it's broken? Everybody says it is. Well, I want to make sure you all have a top 10 reasons uh, or indicators that your K through 12 school is broken. So uh, here are the top 10 signs that uh, your K through 12 school has issues. Number one, the janitor's teaching math. <laughs> Check it out, it's happened. Number, uh, number nine, to save gas, the police have moved in on site. That's not so funny, is it? Um, number eight, they can't balance a budget. Number seven, the average age of the football team is 27. <laughs> but they got a lot of championships. Number six, there's a uh, parent demanded no homework policy. Are you kidding me? Number five, the graduation rate uh, allows everybody to graduate in the principal's office with room to spare. Number four, self-service metal detectors at the front door. Number three, the bake sale brownies sold out immediately but everybody got the munchies. <laughs> Serious sign there. <laughs> Number two, the school board members all send their kids to private school. <laughs> and most importantly, we have the Death Star, too big to fail. And that is really the big challenge that I think we're, we're facing out there. In, uh, people call it public education. It's not. It's government education. This is the government Death Star that is attacking our school system. Now, the DOE came along not too long ago. In fact, it was around 1978. And if you look at this chart, you will see an enormous rise. This is inflation-adjusted uh, percentage increase in spending, that blue line that goes up to the, to the right and continues to skyrocket. That's the increase in spending since we invented the Department of Education, the Death Star. If you look at the numbers down at the bottom, that's what's happened to test scores. They are down, flat to down, while we're spending all this money. This is a business that has too much cash and should go out of business. Our government schools, don't let them call them public schools, because they're not. They're government schools. So, the one place we thought we could attack it on the positive side, I want to be positive, is the opportunity to attack curriculum, which is as old as books, as old as the printing press. And we spend eight to $15 billion a year on K through 12 educational materials, every year, annually, once a year. And I was buying $130 math textbooks for my children when nothing's changed since Newton got hit on the head with an apple. 10 plus 10 was, is, and will be 20 for a long, long time. They were taking backpacks and 
rolling suitcases to school to carry this stuff around. They're gratuitously revised, and they're actually pretty boring. Have you ever seen anybody read a textbook and jump up and go, yes, I win? No, you won't, you don't. And this model has got to change. So we said, why are we open sourcing spreadsheets, word processors? Why are we open sourcing all of this technology? Why don't we open source the K through 12 educational model? model? Modern European history shouldn't be changing as we move forward. And I'll give you the example of uh, what was a very wonderful business. In fact, they have an organ that comes up out of the stage here uh, where I am that plays music. And, they used to have 40,000 piano players in the United States alone back in early last century, and they would play piano in front of the theater during the silent movies. There were a lot of people doing that. Well, all of a sudden, along came technology, and we were able to put the score right on the film. And so there were two really great piano players in LA doing the musical score. And we were able to put 39,998 people to work doing really good stuff. And you got really good piano music, not somebody who didn't study very hard or didn't show up or had had a couple cocktails before they performed. That's what the Khan Academy can do. That's what open resources can do uh, for all of our students uh, going forward. So we, we created a, uh, a curriculum hosted site, Curriki, that has free open source resources on it that, did I mention, are free and available to anyone who has access to any kind of screen, whether it be a notebook, a phone, or a PC, to be downloaded and used. A huge, huge change in the way curriculum is created and developed. It's all been donated, created, uploaded to the world's largest repository of K through 12 educational materials in the world. So all of these words that you see on the screen here are available online. It's real-time, self-paced, online, on-demand, multimedia, web-enabled, modifiable, translated into any language you want, and it's free. How cool is that? Imagine we had eight to $15 billion. And I'll tell you what's wrong. I went to Spellings under Bush, and I went to Duncan, the Secretary of Education under Obama, and I said, I spent a couple billion dollars a year at Sun Microsystems in R&D quite effectively. In fact, as effectively as probably any technology company. I, can you trust me? either of you, to spend about $30 million a year over the next five years, and I'll create a complete open source K through 12 educational curriculum available to every school district, every teacher, every student, every parent, every content creator for free, all to the national standards, and we can start from there and move forward. Just $30 million a year. You know what they said? We don't have any money. We give it, all, they didn't use these exact words, but they give it all away to the states to buy votes, is what they do with all of our federal tax money that they spend in the DOE. Think about obsoleting eight to $15 billion a year spending with about a $30 million a year investment for five years. Does anybody see any kind of ROI like that anywhere? <laughs> Not in Washington, D.C. We wouldn't be able to control the government schools if we did that. So this is the model, this is the opportunity we have, but it gets to the number one opportunity we have to change education, and that's real-time scoring self-paced. I took one class at Harvard a long time ago that was self-paced, on-demand, real-time, it was statistics. I started Monday morning, I was done Tuesday night. I didn't sleep, eat, shower, whatever. I bugged the professor all throughout the night. I got an A- minus on it in about 36 hours. If Harvard had been online back in the mid-70s, I could have finished it in about eight weeks. <laughs> and all of the dropouts, like Gates, Balmer, Jobs, Ellison, 
and now Zuckerberg and all these other folks who dropped out, I wouldn't be here talking to you. I'd be running a big company. <laughs> We're talking about nobody being held back, no teacher, no parent, no student being held back. It's not, it's not just focusing in on no child left behind. It's the ones we're holding back who are the ones who are going to do some really, really great things going forward. So that's what we're trying to do with uh, Curriki. It's a, it's a big opportunity. Real-time scoring will change from textbooks where kids fall asleep to what happens in my family with my four boys when they start doing online real-time scored uh, education stuff. I tell them at 10 o'clock at night, step away from the computer. You are done. You are going to sleep right now. You can't pull them away because if kids can see that a couple of hours of work moves them up the leaderboard, we call it gamification in the, in the real world. We have to gamify. You can't take a test with a third grader and give them the answer back a week later. A week in a third grader, it's four centuries. But if you give them real-time feedback, real-time scoring, and you see them climbing the leaderboard in real time, you will have to do what I have to do with my kids when they're step away from the computer, put it down, meet somebody. <laughs> It'll be a very, very different educational experience. So that's the big opportunity. Uh, you can see the numbers are pretty, pretty amazing. Uh, we're uh, approaching 10 million unique visitors at a at a high rate. I wish it was a dot com, but then it wouldn't be free. And I think K through 12 educational materials should be free. Uh, we have uh, over 51,000 uh, free assets out there, and it's growing very, very quickly. And it's all curated and safe. Unlike YouTube, which you don't necessarily want to bring into your classroom, we make sure this is all good, clean stuff. So a uh, very, very valuable resource. Uh, thank you for uh, listening to us, and remember, curriki.org. Thank you very much. <laughs>